Well, good morning, everybody. As we continue, I just want to also caution you uh, about making an assumption that all this is kind of a given. I think with the, when you begin to talk about a subject like truth and love, it's so natural to feel like that truth and love are just kind of plain uh, everyday understandings. But what, sh what we're doing each week is kind of building on the concepts uh, or stretching out the, our understandings. And so you'll see that there's a lot of just nuances that we can re regularly find little uh, pitfalls uh, as Christians to fall into or to have trouble with. And so this is yet just another one of those. So I would just caution you about that. And then as we proceed kind of methodically over what uh, we're looking at, it's that we see it not as common ground, but also uh, see it as really that there's something elusive about it. Because if it was just all very natural and we could just say the concept of truth and concept of love and people could apply that easily, then, you know, uh, we wouldn't really need to do this class at all. And we just, you know, we could just stop and <laughs> I'll just kind of relax. But we need to re hear these truths over and over again, reemphasize them, strengthen these areas. And the, the benefit of this class is I've studied, you know, uh, putting these things together is, is really that we're exploring all the nuances of it and getting kind of granular, but at the same time, the the work of the mark of a Christian is sort of like a template, because I can I can go in and I can find out uh, what Schaefer is saying, um, and 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 kind of expound on it. See, because Schaefer uh, is one of those guys that you can read um, who practically every other word is loaded, and you're thinking, well, that's just you know his way of saying things, and it sounds kind of peculiar, but oh well, and then move on, but. It, you have to go and unpack that. It just really has to be kind of uh, fleshed out in order to understand what he's getting at sometimes because it's it's so rich and it's usually based off of a lot of study. And so I'll try, try to uh, keep doing that. That's kind of, kind of the mode of this. I mean, 38 pages, but wow, each section is just chock full of uh, really rich stuff. Now, last week we ended the our last class on discussion um, on the calling to love Christians above and beyond the normal calling to love everyone as ourselves. This special honor, as we said, is not to love Christians to the exclusion of others, but to love Christians in a way that complements the way we have love for all. Yet, um, this emphasis is really a point of truth. Uh, if you think about it, how we discern whether people are Christians or not. Um, and so this really kind of draws us to a different place. Um, the emphasis is on a point of truth. Saying that we love true Christians implies that we make the proper distinction. And yet, not all groups who call themselves Christians are comfortable with this. Um, Schaefer uses this phrase, true Christians, in his work quite often. And as we are in an age when the word Christian has become subjective to many, even though Christ has given us a standard, Schaefer feels the need to say true Christians. Uh, it's, it's an important thing that he's trying to convey, is that in, in our day and age, you don't just say the word Christian anymore. Uh, it used to be, in say the word Christian, and you generally knew what someone was talking about, someone who adhered to a certain mode of thinking in the Bible and, and such. But we're in a, in a day and age now when people can say Christian and not be Christian at all. Um, there's a harm, really, for us, too, as Christians in, tr in treating non-Christians uh, with the same love as Christians. Uh, Christians are brothers and sisters, and non-Christians are neighbors. So that's, that's the distinction. And although we do not know uh, who might become brothers and sisters, that distinction has to be held. Um, the difference really has this substantial value. We cannot emphasize a false assurance uh, the consequence of conveying a false positive, and this is a language I use, I use quite a bit in programming, a false positive. You're doing a test, and, and you're trying to test true or false, and the, the answer comes back true when it really should be false. That's a problem, because it throws off the whole system. It cascades uh, through everything else that you're doing, especially if it's a, a very, at the very beginning. And this is. It's at the very beginning of what we consider uh, in, in regard to truth and love. And so if we consider uh, non-Christians to be Christians and we treat them like Christians when they really aren't, uh, we may be doing harm to them because they, we may be giving them a false assurance. 
And so what Schaefer says, from the scriptural point of view, not all who call themselves Christians are Christians. And that is especially true in our generation. The meaning of the word Christian has been reduced to practically nothing. Surely there is no word that has been so devalued unless it is the word God itself. So in our day and age, uh, there are a lot of people. Now, I know we're all kind of in, in a real solid church here, and it may be uh, very comfortable here because we always interact with people that are like us, and the, the Christians that we believe uh, and that we interact with are very knowledgeable in, in most respects here, you know, and everybody seems to know uh, what a true Christian is, and so we, don't, we can take those things for granted. But there's a lot of people, uh, especially those who are in the liberal camp or uh, what was formerly known as modernism, the religious liberal churches who are teaching a, a form of Christianity that does not contain the gospel and that is all-inclusive of everyone. And this is really what Schaefer is getting at, because you can call a person a Christian and really they don't have to have any body of content to that faith. And this is one of Schaefer's emphasis, content truth with content and so as we believe as christians who christians are the the body of what that belief is contains a content about how we assess if a person's a christian or not and here's um what schaefer says jesus however is talking about loving all true christians and this is a command that has two cutting edges for it means that we must both distinguish true christians from all pretenders and be sure that we leave no true Christians outside of our consideration. So, it, it, and it be, begins to be tough, especially in a mixed setting. Uh, how many of you have ever gone to kind of a parachurch uh, assembly of some kind, and you've been in the midst of what you assume were true Christians, and when you had discussion afterwards and maybe talk with a few people, and you realize, oh, wow, there's probably a couple of people here that are not, and so that's that context of there's the visible church and then there's really the invisible church, you know, those who are tr uh, true believers. And so we have to always be mindful of, of that distinction. And um, Schaefer says here further, we cannot say, now here's somebody that, as far as I can tell, does not stand among the group of true Christians, and therefore I don't have to think of him anymore. I can, I can just slough him off. And he says, not at all. He is covered by the second commandment. If you ever start to, if you ever start to really think about this, you, you see what a predicament we are in as, as believers. It's no wonder people have a hard time understanding us. Because we're, we're trying to love two people in two different ways and make sure that we're being uh, honest to both. Yet at the same time, there's all these other nuances that come into play as far as like how things are going, uh, as far as uh, our interaction with people, sometimes w what appearances are, how things appear to people. Uh, you know, how many times have you been judged for maybe correcting somebody in truth, and you were being you were being careful about that, but you were being hateful as far as the world was concerned, and sometimes they judge too harshly. So it's it's un an importance of understanding how to do that in a very careful way. The most significant thing to understand in this is that the distinction has kingdom implications. Um, it's calling non-Christians Christians is to convey something outwardly that's not inwardly true, something that we hear every, every week when we do our, our uh, communion uh, uh, time. It's that we, we see that in the sacrament or regularly demonstrating that if you are partaking of this, Make sure that you're demonstrating that something that is an inward reality. And this is that check. And, and, and isn't that beautiful that it goes back again to the person of Christ? It's Christosyncret. Uh, it comes back to who he is. And yet inviting people into our fellowship is a natural part of how the world experiences truth. So we have to include them at the same time as in some respects we have to draw the line uh, where, where we are with them. Uh, they must interact with us in order that they might judge our love and measure the truth that we have. Okay, so, um, so what is the standard for the quality of our love? Well, um, Schaefer says, we are to love all Christians as I, Jesus says, have loved you. 
Now think of, of both the qual, uh, sorry, quality and the quality of Jesus' love toward us. Uh, of course, he is infinite and we are finite. He is God, we are men. Since he is infinite, our love can never be like his. It, it can never be an infinite love. But think, think about that. And, and I want to ask, you know, Schaefer talks about the quality and the quantity of Jesus' love. How would you interpret those things? What is the quality of Jesus' love and what is the quantity of his love? Perfect and infinite. Yeah, there's a perfection in the quality of his love and an infinite in the quantity. It just goes on and on. And I love the words and phrases that's used throughout the Old Testament of steadfast love. It's a Hebrew idiom that really is, it holds this weight of just ongoing, ongoing, perseverant love. Uh, just overlooking uh, so many offenses through the grace that, that God abounds through. And so it's the steadfast love from throughout the generations. That is who God is. So when we try to love like that, it will not be perfect, and it will not be exhaustive. But an important thing that Schaefer always taught, and you get this in, in uh, many of his works, especially true spirituality, is this principle called substantial. It means that you can have substantial truth, substantial love, because things won't be perfect until Christ returns. Till, till Christ returns and establishes his kingdom, things will not be absolutely perfect. However, they can be substantial. So if Christ is this, is this standard, and his standard is infinite, uh, while ours cannot be infinite, it can be substantial. It, it's not exhaustive, but it's significant enough with the aid of the Holy Spirit to demonstrate just a glimpse of what eternity is. And so our part is to be true in the face of evil. And so that's, that's kind of where we're at. We, have to, we can't get it perfect. Uh, I think sometimes when we strive for perfection, we're, we're really missing what, what, what God is calling us to. And Schaefer says, uh, if you desire perfection and, and, or nothing, you will get nothing. <laughs> because people are just people. And we're in a sinful world, and we're in a, a fallen, depraved state. And yes, there's a substantial amount of truth that can be applied through uh, the Holy Spirit, and that sanctification process continues on through life, and we grow, but it can't be perfect. And I think we have to realize that, yeah, we're going to strive at this, but we're not going to get it perfect. But we are going to get it right. We are going to keep going. We're going to persevere until the perfect uh, truth and perfect love is properly established. Now, another thing is that we have to guard against is being prideful. And this phrase uh, that Schaefer talks about, uh, he heard a lot in his day, we love all Christians. He used to hear people put that on their s slogans and things. And so Schaefer heard this phrase quite often in his time and usually implied loving Christians while you're excluding others. And we must be careful in using language that, imp that implies that we do not care about our fellow man. So if, if we're using language to exalt the, the, the commandment to love our brothers and sisters, yet lose, uh, using language that uh, is picking away at the commandment to love our fellow man as neighbors, then we're missing the mark. It's like we can, we can obey one and, and forget the other and, and, and still be making a huge mistake. So here's another quote from Schaefer. It can be either this exceedingly ugly thing as ugly as anything anyone can imagine, or it can be something as profound as anyone could imagine. And if it is to be the latter, it will take a great deal of time, a great deal of conscious talking and writing about it, a great deal of thinking and praying about it on the part of the Bible-believing Christians. So it's, it's, it requires effort to get here. And so each, each step as we you know, uh, elaborate on this, we're getting at that concept. And so what does this profound calling look like? And I think it's kind of summed up in this phrase that Schaefer used, the church is to be a loving church in a dying culture. It's, we're, we're in the middle of the, the trenches here, 
and we're immersed in, in difficulty, yet to show love, joy, and truth in the middle of that is to exalt something that is deeply profound. Um, and something else that we need to understand is that it's not only that they will judge our love, but that Jesus has given them a right, and they have a right to judge. A non-Christian from the outside is going to be looking in at us and assessing what's going on. And so Schaefer points out this very important thing, that they have a right to judge. So here's a quote from Schaefer. Jesus is giving a right to the world upon his authority. He gives the world the right to judge whether you and I are born-again Christians on the basis of our observable love towards all Christians. By this, they will know that you are my disciples, Christ says. A lot of unbelievers expect to be an absolute, absolute absence of God or something. Mm -hmm. kind of a, almost a unrealistic perfection in Christians. You know, yeah. Yeah. My brother-in-law says that. He's really a little bit antagonistic against the institutional church because there seems so much hypocrisy there. And exactly. I seem to realize exactly. that the church is full of safe centers that are imperfect. But I do agree they have a right to see a higher standard than by far what they Yeah, and it, so we will be uh, misjudged based off of, because they don't know how to rightly judge based off the permission that they've been given. But, it requires us to, to at least understand that it's coming from Christ. Um, whether they know it or not, they have this, this license to judge us based on what, what Christ has given us. So when they misjudge us, uh, we, should, we should definitely uh, like mull that over. And this is what the next quote says. If people come to us and cast in our teeth the, uh, the judgment that we are not Christians because we have not shown love toward other Christians, we must understand that they are only exercising a prerogative which Jesus gave them. And we must not get angry. If people say, you don't love other Christians, we must go home, get down on our knees, and ask God whether or not what they say is true. And if it is, then they have a right to have said what they have said. So it's a sobering thought. But you're right, it, we're going to be misjudged because they're going to mischaracterize because they don't know the gospel. They don't know the whole truth. They don't know the condition that we're in. And so we're, we're going to be very easily mislabeled because uh, the world does not want to hear truth, even sometimes even with truth with love. Um, and I, what's, what's interesting, too, is, um, and Danny and I were just talking about this before class, is that you know he accidentally said something to a coworker there at, at work. He didn't mean anything by it, but this person took offense to it. And so um, we talked with another coworker and asked, well, should I um, apologize? And, and he was like, no, he, he won't accept it. And, and, and his reason, too, behind that was seemed to be that uh, if you go and apologize, he's going to perceive you as weak. So you might as well just not do it at all. And I told Dan, I said, well, you know, we're commanded to, to, to do it anyway. And so whether he perceives that as weak or not, um, that's, that's our obligation. But that's the type of scenarios we're going to get ourselves in because uh, can you imagine somebody who does not want to, to hear that? And maybe it's all their life they've heard people just say sorry and not really mean it. So they're just thinking, you know, you're just a weak person that always thinks you have to say sorry and it really doesn't mean anything anyway. You know, if you were to come to real knowledge, you'd realize that, you know, that's worthless and the only thing you need to do is change. You know, some people could be very hard uh, about their uh, ideas on this. And so it's going to be a difficult thing for us to, to, to deal with. And so I wanted to le read uh, sorry, one verse to you before we go into the, the questions. It's posted right out the side of the door. I don't know if you, any of you read it today. John 12.10, uh, love one another with brotherly affection and outdo one another in sharing honor. You know, it's, uh, and I, I don't know, I'm not, uh, when, we, when we do that writing on the walls, they have the writing on the walls, it's really cool, but a lot of times I just kind of walk past and I don't notice it. And then uh, once, finally, after passing it so many times, like, oh, I need to stop and read that. And so I, I read it this morning, like, that's cool, because uh, that's what, exactly what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm.